We give you glory and we give you honor. We bless your name, Lord. Your wonderful God. Your mighty Savior. We have come to worship you. We have come. Call upon your name. We have come to pray to you. Our Lord and our Savior. We bless your name this morning. Blessed Holy Spirit, we welcome you here. We declare your Lordship over this place. We thank you for the victory you have given us over all the forces of darkness. Thank you, Lord, for saving us and making us sit with you in heavenly places. We thank you. We give you glory and honor. Be Lord in these services that will follow even after this one. Be Lord in our ministry and every branch. Be Lord over your church in the city of Kampala. Be Lord over your church in Uganda. Be Lord over the nation of Uganda. Be Lord over what is going on in this season, the election. Be the Lord of the elections, Lord. Preserve people's lives and let your peace prevail over everything. Be Lord over every member of this congregation, Lord. Every friend, wherever they are. Even that as they go out and come in, be Lord over their lives. We thank you. Holy Spirit, we thank you. We bless you. We bless you. We give you glory. We give you honor. You are a wonderful Savior. We thank you, Lord. Come and speak to us through your word, from your heart. Holy Spirit, teach us. Speak to us. Speak to our lives and circumstances and situations. We thank you. We give you glory and we give you honor. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. God bless you, choir. Just wave to your neighbor. We are praying that the COVID pandemic will go so that you can shake your brother, your sister's hand. Praise God. Praise the Lord. You are most welcome for this Sunday service and welcome back from Christmas. I, I hope everything went on well. And we want to thank God for our nation. If you came here, maybe you are sick. Just believe the Lord for your healing. Praise God. He has given us the victory. So whatever it is that stands on our way, it cannot stand, cannot manage to stand. The Lord will root them out. This morning, we are looking at a very important uh, message entitled, The Only Savior. Praise God. So I want to welcome you uh, to this Eureka Kingdom time because I know it's our solution. The word provides what we need. And I also want to welcome those who are watching online so that uh, be ready for the blessing of the word. When you are ready for something, you receive it. And I know the Lord will bless you. The only savior. That is the message. In life, people try many things to come out of, to change their situations, to change their lives. And they try many ways. They, they, they engage different kind of powers that are not godly. But I want us to look at what the Lord says. Because if you don't get the Savior, you have lost it. This only Savior, the Lord talks about, the scripture talks about, for many centuries, for many generations, through many prophets at different times, kept talking about the Savior until the Savior stepped here on earth 2,000 years ago. 
And that's why we were celebrating Christmas. And that's why we are in this Christmas season. None of you should miss it. Praise God. No one should miss it. Tell your neighbor you should not miss it. A savior provides salvation. That's, that's how important it is. And we have only one savior. The only savior. Nobody should miss this. And if you are a believer, you have already believed in him, you must repeatedly focus on him. Look at him. Be in a repentance mode. Conscious that you should be right with him at all times. You should not be detracted. Because many things can detract you. Many things can detract you. Now let's look at Matthew 1, 20 to 21. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David. David. Do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife. Because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son and you are to give him the name Jesus. Because he will save his people from their sins. He will save his people from their sins. Sometimes someone will tell you that, oh no, they are talking about the Jews. No, that is not true. He's the savior of the world. Scripture spoke about it repeatedly. Our God is a savior for the entire earth, the entire world, the entire mankind. He said, I'm the God of all mankind. He says it in Jeremiah. I'm the God of all mankind. Is there anything difficult for me? Just look at this. The announcement was made. This was one of the, the last announcements that came. The angel came and spoke to Mary. You shall co conceive. And Mary wondered how. He said, by the power of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will overshadow you. And you will produce a son. And Mary said, okay. Let it be as we have said. But, but Mary was already engaged to Joseph. And when Joseph did, saw that this lady, this young lady he was going to marry, was already pregnant, he, he began to plan to disengage himself. And then, in the dream again, God spoke to him. The Lord appeared. The angel of the Lord appeared to him in the dream again. And told him, I said, Joseph, son of David. Because the Messiah line was promised to David. The Messiah would come out of that line. Remember what Jesus said. And it was not only because of David, but because of Abraham. God promised Abraham, I will bless you. And make you a blessing. And through your seed. It does not say seeds. Seed meaning one person. And that person is Jesus. Through your seed. All the families on earth shall be blessed. All the families on earth. Genesis 12 verse number 3. Through your seed. All the families on earth. No family has been left out. No family. You have not been left out. One, 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 one seed. And scripture says that seed is Jesus Christ. We are told here that you shall give him a name, Jesus. And that name, Jesus, actually means savior. Deliverer. Why? Because he will save his people from their sins. Let me tell you, church, sin is such a deadly thing. The world plays about with it. 
And the world is powerless about it. And you as a human being, you are powerless about sin. You see, when Adam sinned, that's where, when all kind of trouble came. That is when luck surfaced. That's when hard labor began. Man now had to work a lot because the earth was cursed. That is how problems came. Sickness, affliction. You'll find that is Genesis 2. Affliction came, Genesis 3. You'll find that when you read from 2 up to 3. You'll find the garden, how wonderful it was. Eden. That God wanted to replicate man to, to, to spread that kind of garden all over the world. But the devil came in and led man to sin, to break the covenant. And from that moment, Man needed a savior. There was nothing that man could do to save himself. He was totally powerless. And I want to assure you, child of God, without a savior, the true savior, the only savior, the savior the angel talked about, you can do nothing about sin. Discipline will not work. Even if you try discipline, it won't work. Because sin is spiritual. It will save his people. Every human being was created by him and for him. So when we are talking of his people, when scripture is talking of his people, every person Yombi, can you put for us Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 16. Let's look at it in NIV. Colossians chapter 1 verse 15 to 16. You see, you need this kind of scripture here. You need to. To meditate upon it. To have it. Because if you have this scripture here, Julie, hammer the devil in a very bad way. Does not matter what kind of demon come to disturb you. Does not matter what kind of people gather to fight you. These scriptures here, which we are going to look at, they are very powerful. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. That is NIV. Yes. For by him all things were created, things in heaven and on earth, visible and invisible, whether thrones or powers, or rulers, or authorities. All things were created by him and for him. Say by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. All things were created by him and for him. Does that all things include human beings? Yeah. Is their savior. Is the savior. He will save his people from their sin. What sin did. Sin separated man. From fellowship with God. Why was it important for man. To remain fellowshipping with God. Because he needed the blessing. Why did he need the blessing. Because the a blessing empowers a person. To succeed in his assignment. Every one of you here. You have a call of God upon you. You have some work that you have to do for yourself and for others and for your family and for your society, for your nation and for the world. You have some kind of work. You have a contribution to make. The blessing enables you to succeed. That's why we engage in certain practices that allows the blessing to flow. That honors God and allows the blessings to flow. And let me tell you, the blessing produces glory. Praise God. The blessing of God produces what? Glory. And when man sinned, the glory departed. The glory departed.
And the blessing was interrupted. And man began to struggle. But we thank God for his savior. We thank God for his savior. He sent Jesus Christ as the savior of the world. We thank God for a savior. When we are talking about a savior, a savior in its fullest sense, not part savior. No. No area of your life was left out. No area. No area. That's why you were given the mind of Christ by the Holy Ghost. Even your, your brain was saved. He even saved your mind. There's no part of you that was left out. No interest of yours that is left out by the Savior. Church. Every day I want you to pray that Ephesians 1 verse 16. In fact, if you can go up to 23, it's very good. 16. Say, oh God, grant me the spirit of wisdom and revelation. Oh God, grant me wisdom and revelation that I may know you better and that I may know the call you have put upon my life. That I may know the inheritance you have for me. The resources you have for me. That I may know the kind of power I can get from you. Give the Lord a mighty hand of prayer. Every day pray that prayer. I'm telling you, the way you look at the world will change. <laughs> Praise God. The way you look at challenges will change. For example, if you have a land which the devil is, uh, demons are disturbing you from developing and he has taken hold of it, or a house that is haunted. Yeah, there are some homes we have ever prayed for homes where people could not rest in it. They could not sleep until we prayed and evicted those forces out. You just tell the devil that all, everything was created by him and for him. You a thief. You, you, don't, you never created anything. Not even a thread. You did not create it. And that's why God's people were told in Deuteronomy 12. When you read it from 1 to 3. That go and rub away their name from where they have put it. Break down their altars. Remove their altars. Remove their names. Burn them. That is a process of taking back. That's a process of taking back. We got so many title lands in the past and some of them we kept it. You see, so that it would help us later. And it helped us to purchase what we want for, for our projects. But you know that those land in this city of Kampala could not be bought by anybody. The owners would sell and sell and sell and they could not, nobody could buy it. Why? Because, because the devil was there. The demons that said, no, you are not going to take this land. It was handed over somehow to him. And I would go there and pray and break it. And quickly people come and buy it. And the owner would say, oh, pastor, you have these two titles. You have these four titles. Praise God. Some years back, I went and prayed for land in Naguru Hill. The, the, the owner could not sell it. And a prime place, very good place, nobody could buy it. But after prayer, it, was, it took lesser than one month. It was purchased. Praise God. Everything was created by him and for him. Devil, this land. Devil, this car. Devil, this and that. You know, there are things that you can fear and you run away from. If you don't understand the word. Say, I, 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 I cannot have this place. I cannot. And yet it is a strategic place. No, I, 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 I cannot. The demons disturb people here. No. He's a thief. He does not own it. You just tell him that everything, this land was created by Christ. And for him. So you are getting out in the name of Jesus. Because I belong to him. You see, that is how salvation works. That's how the Savior works. He helps you to take back. Brother Jasper, he helps you to take back what God has for you. <laughs> Don't fear them that carry witchcraft in their bags or in their waist. Don't fear them. Don't fear, in fact, relatives. 
who are experts at bewitching and cursing. From today, don't fear them. Sister Grace, from today, don't fear them. <laughs> Be bold. You can even make your announcement at the right time. Don't make your announcement very early. But when the time is near, make it. <laughs> But even if you make it early, they cannot change it anyway. They cannot. <laughs> Announcement for good things <laughs> that are about to happen. Well, Joseph announced it very early. <laughs> he ended up in the pit. <laughs> but still, it never stopped him from being the second in command after Pharaoh of Egypt. He became the prime minister of Egypt. His brothers could not stop it. They were very jealous. Praise God. You are on the winning side. I say you are on the winning side because you have a savior. The only savior. Let's look at John 10, 6. Is that 10, 6? Fourteen, fourteen six, sorry. Fourteen six. Jesus answered, I am the way and the truth and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You see what this Savior is claiming? Some people try transcendental meditation. They begin to meditate. They, 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 they do their meditation and that they're releasing power. That will help them. No, they're wasting time. They are filling their minds with the demons. The moment you blank out your mind, the demons come and take, it, take you over your mind. Many things people do. But Jesus said, I'm the way. You want the way to the almighty God? I am the way. I'm the only way. It does not say ways. I am the way. And the truth. I'm the truth. I came to fulfill everything that God says. His word is truth. And I'm the life. I'm the one who can give you a new life. God's life. God's own life. Call eternal life. Praise God. Very powerful. Now, I want us to look at a certain story which can really help us to understand the kind of savior we have. The only savior. Jesus is the only savior. We are celebrating his entrance into the history of humanity in a powerful way. Yes, he, he, he appeared many times in the Old Testament. It is believed actually that when uh, 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 Abraham met uh, Melchizedek, the king of righteousness, because if, if, if he was really a human being, how could he be a king of righteousness and peace? How? Because he, a sinner cannot be a king of righteousness and peace unless the Savior is in him. So it is believed that that Melchizedek was actually what appeared there as Melchizedek was theopany. That's when uh, that's a theological term. That, uh, that that's when God takes a human form, theopany. That's what is believed, and I believe that because he has no record. Hebrews says, Hebrews seven says he has no father, no mother, no beginning, no end. And he's a priest forever. And that's the, 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 the role that Christ Jesus is serving now. Next to the Father. He's a priest. Whatever we say is a priest of our profession. Whatever we profess as believers, Jesus picks it and takes it to the Father. Father, look. Mary is saying this. Eh? Mary is agreeing with us. Mary is agreeing with us. Our statement. Have you heard this? Have you heard this? 
Now, when someone says, oh, things are very bad. Uh, things are impossible. Now, he cannot take that before the father. In fact, the, de the demons are very happy about that. They will take it and make things impossible for you. That is not for you. Now, this setting here was during the Acts of the Apostle time after Christ had gone. It was not many days after Christ had gone. It was shortly really after he had gone. When the disciples began to preach all over Jerusalem. And it was, this story is set in the temple. The setting is the temple. And it was afternoon. Peter and John were going to pray. And at the entrance of the gate, called the beautiful gate, they met a beggar who was crippled from, from birth. Crippled from birth. Crippled from birth. And the beggar looked at John, Peter and John, expecting to receive something. And Peter had another plan because he had the life of God in him. He was a minister of the gospel. He told him that I don't have cash with me. But what I have now, which can produce cash and everything, what I have I will give you in the name of Jesus Christ. Get up and walk. And he touched the man and pulled, held the man and the man stood up. And the power of God hit his legs. Became strong. And Peter entered. And John, the temple. And the man, the former beggar. Was jumping, following Peter. Praising God. Praising God for delivering him. A big miracle had happened. Everyone in the temple was looking at Peter. And John and said, what kind of people are these? Because they recognized. And they said, but this, was, this is the beggar. Who has been begging here all these years? What has happened? This, this men have healed this beggar. Who are they? And Peter said, why are you looking at us as if we, are, we have done this by our power? No. No. The very person, the savior you rejected is the one who did this. It's by faith in him that this man here has been delivered. I don't think your state is worse than that of the beggar crippled from birth. Do you think your condition is worse than that of the beggar who was just being carried to beg for money? Is anyone carrying you to beg for money? <laughs> now, let's look at it. Now, Peter began to, to in fact, to make them responsible collectively for the murder of Jesus Christ. But it was not in a bad way. He said, look, the one you rejected and murdered, you people, is the author of life. So let's look at Acts chapter 3 verse 15 to 16 first. He told them, you killed the author of life, but God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. You just look at that church. He himself said, I'm the way, the truth, and the life. Now here, Peter is testifying. And he says that you killed the author of life. You killed him. You crucified him. You handed him to the Romans. He was killed. But God did not leave him there. According to the prophecy, he gave to David. He did not leave him in the grave. He raised him from the dead because death could not hold him. I'm here to announce to you that death cannot hold you. I said, I'm here to announce to you that because Christ is in you, death cannot hold you in the mighty name of Jesus. I said, no one can program you to die before your time in Jesus. Name. You kill the oath of life. Is the author of life. Is the one that created every living thing. And even every non-living thing. Is the author. 
is the author. See, that's why sometimes when our bodies are sick, you look at him. Don't pray without expectation. There are people who pray and they don't expect to see the answer. No. No. That's lack of faith. When you pray to him, expect to see the answer and begin to thank him for the answer. In fact, you people who have been in fasting, even the ones who have not been in fasting, the grace that God has released here will give you the answer you are looking for in Jesus' name. But God raised him from the dead. We are witnesses of this. Even me, I'm a witness. I'm a witness. Many times. I'm a witness in the life of Simon who came here with a wheelchair. With both foot rotting. Because of cancer. And the bones were being seen. The flesh was eaten up. They were planning to cut his legs. Miraculous laughter prayer. I saw the skin covering the wound. And within a few weeks, three weeks, the wound was totally healed. That was proof that Jesus actually is alive. Because we prayed in his name. It's proof that Jesus is alive. God really raised him. I'm a witness of that. I want to assure you that you cannot die of that sickness in Jesus' name. And every infirmity in your body, in the name of Jesus, I rebuke them to go. We are witnesses. Don't allow the devil to threaten you. Chris, don't. Don't. Whether in the village, whether in the office, whether in the city, whether outside the city, don't. Even problems, don't let it threaten you. The problems you have, hand it over to him. The needs you have, hand it over to him. He's a savior in the fullest sense. There's no part of your life that he cannot save you. Save. There's no part of your life that he cannot save. Verse number 16. By faith in the name of Jesus. Look at that. This man whom you see and know was made strong. This man whom you see and know. You know him because he was a beggar here. Now you are seeing him because he's walking. Is now able to walk. It is Jesus' name and faith that comes through him that has given this complete healing to him. As you can all see, may you receive a complete healing from Jesus in Jesus' name. May you receive a complete healing in your body in Jesus' name. May you receive a complete healing in your emotion, in your mind, in your heart in Jesus' name. Because healing is not only for the body, even for the mind. Some people are worried and are disturbed and are mentally confused. But Jesus is able to heal you even from there. From that. Acts 4, 8, 13. I want you to see how if we are not careful, we can, we can decide to go back and begin to worship idols. We can go back to idolatry. We can decide to paint up a picture of our own Jesus and leave the real Jesus. Let's look at Acts chapter 4, verse 8 to 13. Chapter 4, verse 8 to 13. We are going to look at it from NIV. Ariad, can you read for us? From NIV. Acts chapter 4, verse 8 to 13. I will take you through verse by verse. Verse 8 to 13 says, Then Peter, filled with the Holy Spirit, said to them, Rulers and elders of the people. Now stop there and remain there. You see, what happened is that when now there was commotion, 
The entire city heard about this miracle. And the rulers, the people, the council, the Sanhedrin that had condemned Jesus heard about it. And they were disturbed. He said, these people are, we thought this man, we had killed him and put him away forever. Again, these people have come up with this name. And now there's a big miracle that has happened. And we cannot even deny it. And actually they arrested Peter and John. They arrested. Let me tell you. That is why sometimes when you are preaching the gospel, you meet opposition. Don't think everyone is happy with what is good. Even when Apostle Paul was preaching in the city of Athens, Athens, in Greece, they attacked him badly. Why? Because he, 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 as he was preaching, he did, he did a powerful miracle there. And people thought he was a god. He says, no, it is Jesus. And then the idol, the people who, who trade in idols, they make pictures of God. And they make altars for false god. They said, no, we shall be out of business. If, if we allow this man to continue, we shall be out of business. Our idol at Temis is great. Then they mobilized people and had a big demonstration at Temis. Great is a Temis of Ephesus. Great is a, it was actually Ephesus, the city of Ephesus. They began to chant, they, they were going to kill this man. So they knew now that Jesus, in the name of Jesus, they had performed a very powerful miracle. Where will the authority be? How will they convince people that they are still relevant? You see? Church. And yet, the people benefit. This man, the lame man has benefited. Let me tell you, church. You know why you need this savior? You need to walk in his power? Because the world, the world is locked up from that time when Adam sinned. People don't just, they are not free. They are not free of sin. They are not even free of the forces of hell. But if you can show them how to come out and become free. And that's why Apostle Paul said the kingdom of God is not a matter of talk, but of power in the Holy Ghost. Very, very important. You need the power of God in your life. You need the power of God. Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit. Peter was filled with the life of God. And that's why it is important to be baptized in the Holy Spirit and to be continually filled. Ask for the infilling all the time. So he was able now to face them. They arrested him. They brought him before the elders and the rulers of, of the Jews. And he was filled with God's life. And a fisherman who never went to school. But who was studied under the feet of Jesus and was discipled in scripture. Leave alone those who want to preach the gospel. They cannot read the Bible. They cannot sit on a man of God to help them. And then they, they say they are going to preach. You are going to preach ignorance. You see? You will get confounded out there. Rulers and elders of the people. That's what Peter told them. Tell her, continue, uh, Ariet. Verse number nine. If we are being called to account today for an act of kindness shown to a man who was lame and are being asked how he was healed, continue. Then know this you and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, whom you crucified, but whom God raised from the dead. That this man stands before you healed. Continue. Jesus is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone. Salvation is found in no one else, for there is no other name under heaven given to mankind by which we must be saved. Continue. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished. And they took note that these men had been with Jesus. Give the Lord a mighty hand of praise. 
powerful you can sit down if we are called to account if we are called to explain imagine like they were criminals but they were being arrested and called to explain about how the man got healed <laughs> That's why there are many who even oppose miracles. If we are being called to account to explain today for an act of kindness shown to a cripple, to a cripple, you should have mercy. You should have mercy for a crippled man. These religious men did not even have mercy for a crippled man. In fact, they should have been happy with the man. The man was jumping, jubilating, and glorifying God. But they were not happy. They arrested Peter. They even arrested the man. Remember, when, even when Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead, they planned to kill Jesus and also kill Lazarus. <laughs> destroy the testimony. No one will destroy your testimony in Jesus' name. Nobody. Because Christ is buying it. But if you want us to explain, then know this. You and all the people of Israel, it is by the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. By the name of Jesus Christ. By the name of the Savior. Remember the name Jesus means, Jesus means Savior. He means Savior. It's by the Savior, the Savior called the Christ that this crippled man was healed. The act of kindness, the gracious act. You see, grace of God includes forgiveness and kindness and then his power. It's like a coin with two faces. Some people stop at the kindness and the forgiveness. That's why they continue sinning, wallowing in sin. Oh, the grace of God is sufficient. They remain in sin. Oh, the grace of God is sufficient. We are under grace. We are under grace. He's ready to forgive us. They continue in sin. No, they will end up in hell. I'm telling you. They will end up. Let no one deceive you with the, with the fake gospel. You continue sinning. True grace gives the Power to break loose from sin. May you break loose from every form of sin in Jesus' name. That's why Psalm says, I will not look at evil things with my eyes. I will not look at evil things. None of you should watch pornography, sexual sins. It's a sin. None of you. And if you're a man research in UK, says those who watch phonography, they become foolish. There was a research I read about conducting in the USA. The men who watch pornography. I don't know what it does for women, but it messes them up. Demons begin to come and sleep with them. It opens you up. And that's why Sam says, I will not look at vile things. I will not set any vile image before me. Any bad picture before me. Any bad feeling before me. You have, you have to break loose from all manner of sin. And your mind becomes like a sewer. You know, see when it flows into the street. That's what pornography does to a person. Some years back, I, I came, uh, some lady came to me here. They had waited in church, in one of the big churches in the town here. And they were happy, happily married. And you know, you have to be very careful. Because even in the church, you have godless people who don't know. Because, they, they, because lack of knowledge destroys, I'm telling you. They don't know. Because I've heard that during counseling, some counselors even give pornographic film for a couple that are going to marry to go and watch. You just look at that. Look at that. Unbelievable. How many of you have heard about that? 
But I've heard about it. Mary has heard about it. Because I had, I got it from a first a witness. A witness who experienced it. And that woman told me that the, the day the man began to bring that and washing it in the bedroom. The man stopped having sexual relationship with her. Why? The demons of pornography came in. And the man lost interest totally in the wife. If that one is happening to you, you have lost interest in your husband and the women who do the same and men who do that. Then run to the Lord and let that yoke be totally broken. Because what the, the devil does, it will open your interest in someone else. As you continue watching the pornography, you will go with that somebody and then again you lose interest in that somebody and then you look at another person. Before you know it, you have been sucked into immorality. In fact, the marriage of that woman broke completely. She broke. I told her, I said, I need you here. But she also had no time for getting the word of God and being trained in prayer. She lost her marriage because of pornography. So, we, sin, sin is like the other story. In fact, I must, I must end, but let me tell you this story. Uh, it's, it's, it's a story about a camel and the owner. You know a camel is a desert, a, an animal that is used in the desert. It is able to cross the desert. It's able to do without water for a long, for many hours. It stores water in the back. It drinks a lot of water. And it can stay for a long time without drinking water. Because there's no water in the desert until they reach another oasis and then, then they drink and then normally the owner also packs the tent among the baggages, packs the, the tent, so that where the nightfall get them, he pitches his tent. And the, the, he ties the camel outside there. And with him he stays inside the tent. But there's a story which teaches us, which has a moral lesson, a very important lesson. Uh, the camel, when, 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 when this man was sleeping, the camel talked, spoke to him. I said, Master, it is so cold. You know, in the desert, at night, it's very cold. It's so cold out here. Very cold. Allow me just push my, my nose only inside the tent. And uh, the master said, okay, you put your, 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 your nose inside. Only the nose. Then after something, he said, no, the cold is too much. Allow me just push my head. And the owner said, okay, you push your, your head. They said, Master, just allow me to push my neck inside this call. And the, the camel continued putting on demand. And he said, allow me to put my chest. When the man said, yes, as he pushed, you know it is a very big animal. It uprooted the entire tent. The owner plus it, they were all in the call now. Sin is like that. That's why the Bible says that don't allow the devil to put a footstool. It will come with an idea of just a foot only. Let my foot stay there. You say, ah, this is a small thing. Pornography is a small thing. Quarreling my husband all the time is a small thing. Anger is a small thing. No, it's not a small thing. It will mess you up. Oh, let me fornicate only this once. I, I, I think God will understand. No, he will not understand. The demons will come and take all of you. You cannot play with sin. Praise God. It is by the name of Jesus. Whom you crucified. The name of the Savior. Who saves us from the sin. And not only that. From, from, from all kind of infirmities. This man was got out of. A very hopeless state was a beggar. No, he had to depend on others. Let me tell you. 
this savior, the only savior, is able to make you rely on yourself. From today, may you begin to rely on yourself in Jesus' name. He can empower you to rely on yourself. So that you don't bother people. Because he has a complete plan for you. I know the plans I have for you. They are not bad plans. They are good plans to give you hope and a future. May you fulfill your destiny. May the future deliver what God has for you. Ah, that's a very weak man. So Peter told them, he said, this man is standing here because of the Savior. He's standing here healed because of the Savior. He is the stone you builders rejected, which has become the cornerstone, the capstone. Up to today, people reject the Savior. Up to today. Never forget about the Savior, the only Savior. The religious people rejected him. That's why they killed him. Up to now, if they cannot reject him, do you know what they do? They paint another picture of the Savior. Huh? The smiling Jesus, the baby Jesus, ah, this good Jesus. Yeah. The one that can tolerate them stay in sin. The one who loves them irrespective of what they do to others. Oh, Jesus is so good. But the Jesus these people are talking of, Peter is talking of, is the one that said, repent. For the kingdom of God is at hand. When he began to preach, that's what he said. Change your mind about sin. Change your mind about the way you live. Change your mind. The kingdom, the rule of God is near you. You can access it. And you can access it through Jesus Christ. Because he's a savior. Repent. And believe the gospel. He told them. That's the first thing that Jesus said. When he began to preach. Repent and believe. For the kingdom of God is at hand. The rule of God. God wants to begin to rule in your life. May you experience the rule of God in every angle of your life. In Jesus name. Allow him to rule. These people rejected him. Verse number 12. Very powerful. Salvation is found in no one else. Redemption. I told you the other time what redemption. How the word ransom began to be used in the, during the Roman time in the slave market. Good Romans who are sympathetic to slaves, they would go and ask how much are you selling this? How much are you selling this? Then they, they give them the, the price. Then they pay. Then they move with those young people. On the way they say now you go and start your life. I've bought you to free you. That man is called a ransom. We have been experiencing some uh, people here who abduct people you have heard of very tra tragic stories here in our city here where people have been kidnapped and ransom as confirmed. If you don't produce this, we shall kill the person. You see? No, but the kind of ransom Jesus paid for us is a different one. It's not to kill us. It's not to exact uh, whatever they want out of us, but whatever he wants out of us, but to free us. To free us. Salvation, redemption is found in no one else. Deliverance, rescue, recovery, escape. I love it. Recovery. One of the biggest job as believers that we do is to recover what was lost. He came to save that which was lost. Through the Savior, we recover what was lost. If you're a pauper, you can recover because resources are there for you. Resources are there for you. That's why Apostle Paul told them, showed them how to pray. For the spirit of wisdom and revelation that they may know him better and know the call and then know the inheritance that they have. Don't just sit there and say, oh, I come from a poor family. No, no. 
there's something, there's a call on you. That call will produce resources in your life. For every vision God has put in your heart, there's a provision. Salvation is found in no one else. It's found in no one else. It's not found in Buddha. It's not found. Name them. Name them. There are so many. It's not found at the witch doctor's place. It's not found with astrologers. It's not found with people who are in power. Because they also need a savior. Political power, name it, economic power. No. It's not found in money. Salvation is not found in money. That's why there are many wealthy people who go to their grave miserable. Because they never found the savior. You must turn to the savior Jesus. You must stick to him if you're ready with him. Cling to him. Because he's the hope of glory. Is the one that will make the value of God, all his values and attributes manifest in your life. So, Peter made a very big statement here. Salvation is found in no one else. For there is no other name under heaven given to men by which we must be saved. That's why Jesus said, in my name, as you pray in my name, the Father will answer you. Whatever you ask in my name, the Father will grant you. Why? Because this salvation is found in no any other name under heaven that has been given that will save men. No. That's why you need to stay with Jesus and you need to be in the repentance mode. Not in the sin mode. Repentance mode. Be aware that anytime Jesus can come back. Are you ready? Ask your neighbor. Are you ready? Should he come back? Are you ready? Some people will say, I think I will be ready next year. No, no. Be ready now. <laughs> Verse number 13. When they saw the courage of Peter and John and realized that they were unschooled, ordinary men, they were astonished and they took note that this man had been with Jesus. Let me tell you, church, don't cry about the milk that has been spilled. Don't. Don't cry about what your family never got. Don't cry about the fact that you never had certain opportunities that others had. Don't even cry that you never had the opportunity to go to college. Don't cry. Don't cry. These people were unschooled, but what they needed now was to be with Jesus and to learn from him. And even these doctors of laws that were seated here, they looked at these people, they said, but, but how come these fellows are talking like this? They, a lot, they, they speak with a lot of power and passion. How come? They have not even gone to school, but, but they beat us. How? Jesus will change your life. I say the Lord Jesus will change your life totally in the mighty name of Jesus. Lift up your hands. Let me pray for you. Father, we want to thank you for granting us a savior. Father, whoever is listening to this message, Father, touch their lives in the mighty name of Jesus. Remove every veil that does not make them see the light of glory through your son, Jesus Christ. Remove every veil that does not make them see the answer that they have, that they can receive from him, that they have in him. Oh, Father, we thank you. I speak life. I rebuke sickness. I rebuke pain. I rebuke every kind of satanic oppression in the lives of the people who are listening to me right now. I break every demonic hold over their lives. I release them. I release their destinies. That has been held. I release them. I release them into their rightful places. In the mighty name of Jesus. Whatever the circumstance. Father let your grace prevail. We thank you Lord. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. If you are here. And you have no saving knowledge of Christ. You have no relationship with God. You can establish one now. 
through Christ Jesus. Is there anyone here in the congregation you want to give your life to Jesus? And even online? If you are there online and you are watching this message and you know and you know that you don't have a saving knowledge of Christ Jesus, you have no relationship with God because you have never accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, you can establish that relationship right now by accepting him as your Lord and Savior. Follow a simple prayer of commitment after me right now. Say, dear Jesus, I come to you as a sinner. Forgive my sins. Right now, I invite you, come into my heart. Be my Lord and my Savior. Amen. If you say that prayer from your heart, you are saved by grace through faith in Christ Jesus. Find a Bible teaching church near you where you can go and fellowship in order to grow spiritually. If you live in the city of Kampala, you are most welcome to worship with us at Victory Church of Christ Ministries International in Luzira. And I want to assure you that the messages we share, the word of God we share in our Eureka Kingdom services will totally change your life for the better. And uh, reach us through our contacts on the screen. We shall send you reading material that can help you uh, find your footing in Christ. And now we are going to worship with our resources. We are going to worship the Lord with our resources. We are going to give our tithes. Return it back to him. Because his word in Malachi 3 from verse number 6 up to 12. He says, give the tithe and the offerings. Give me back my tithe and the offerings. The tithe belongs to him. And he needs the offering in his house. So that his work can continue. He says when you do that, the heavens will be, remain open over and he will bless you. When the heavens are closed over your life, you struggle. When you don't tithe, everything you have is at risk because his protection is not there. The blessing will empower you to succeed. The blessing has protection. The blessing will grant you everything that you need in order to fulfill your destiny. So if you need an envelope, put up your hand so that the ushers can give you. And those who are watching online, you can send your offerings and your tithes of different nature uh, from the mobile money number that are on the screen. You can also use the account number that is there on the screen. And the Lord will greatly bless you. Let's pray for our offerings. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus. Even as your people give, bless them. Fulfill your word in their lives. And those who gave in the past, remember them. Those who are giving now, remember them. Bless all of them. We thank you. We give you glory and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the choir minister as we collect our offerings.